Let's learn about a tool that attaches elements to a moving subject in your video. With the motion tracking tool, you can attach anything that you'd like from a text, an image, or an element and attach it to a moving subject. By the end of this lesson, you will know how to track the motion of your subjects, attach things to that subject, and create cool effects with them. So let's get started. The first thing you're going to need for this tool is videos that have a moving subject. I've downloaded some from the stock media tab in Pixabay. Now they are in my favorites. So you can get the same videos by looking for the following tags. This is the first video, second video, and third video. If I double click on any of these, you can see that there is a moving subject. So this was our first video. You can see the duck is not static. It's moving around. The camera is following the duck. And in the second video, we have a stable camera, but we have a moving subject. So the car at some point uh, leaves the screen. Then we get another car. And we have a third example where the subject, let's skip here. They appear on the screen, but they fade away really fast. So these are three types of videos that we're going to test out motion tracking on. And by the end of this lesson, you will know what type of video works best with motion tracking. Let's start with the easiest one. We have this duck just swimming in the pond. There we go. And I'm just going to select my video and head over to this button. This button is called motion tracking. Click it once and you can start tracking. So you can see the steps, place a tracker box over the target area in the preview player and then start tracking. So this is the box that it's referring to. You can see there's a plus sign in the middle and a frame around it. So if the plus is on the duck here, I need to make sure that the duck's head and tail is within this box. Now, before you adjust the box, you definitely want to make sure you're at the start of your video. Because what happens is that after you have assigned the box, you can see that right now the duck is down here and not in the center. Filmora is going to track every motion from the playhead on. So that means if I start tracking here and place the box adjusted to the duck's position here, this part of my video will not be motion tracked. And therefore I can only apply effects for this little bit. So you want to make sure that you start at the beginning. And if you don't want the whole video, now is the time to maybe trim it, split it, and adjust it to the length that you want. I'm going to keep mine around 10 seconds. Now I want to make sure that the playhead is at the start of my video. And now I can double click on this box to get the blue dots on the corners, drag the plus at the center of my subject, drag the blue dots to make sure that my duck is fully within the box. You can also grab the corners if you have adjusted the ratio and you just want it to be larger. Or you can grab this guy for the height or the other side for the width. But you don't want it to be larger than your subject or else that's just going to confuse Filmora. Make sure that it's nicely fit. You don't want to stick to the edges either like this. You want to make sure that you're leaving a tiny bit of room like so. And that way there won't be any problems with the motion tracking. Once you're finished, just hit start tracking. As you can see, Filmora is tracking your duck. It's okay if it slips out like this. As long as the plus is still on your subject, you're good to go. If the plus suddenly jumps over here, then you need to stop the tracking and readjust the box. Hit OK. And now I have a selected clip to apply the motion. 
So basically now I get to put something on top of this, whether it's a text, an effect, an image, or anything else, and then I get to choose that clip over here. Let's hit OK for now. I still have the box over here, so that means that the motion tracking is ready to go. I'm going to grab an element. Let's get this heart element, drag it on top. Dapple click on the element to uh, rescale it. I'm going to keep mine over here. I want it to be next to my duck. All right, head over to the beginning as always. So my uh, heart is still there. I'm going to bring it over here. Hit OK, head back to your video, double click, motion tracking, and now instead of none, choose the pixel block pack. Now the heart element and the video have this purple icon, meaning that they are linked together. And play this back. So there's my heart, it's on the duck. I can reposition it if I'd like. All you have to do is to go somewhere where you can see the heart, double click on it, and you can just move it here, readjust it if you'd like. Play this back and now it's next to my duck instead of on the duck. There we go. Now my duck has a heart element next to it. Notice how it was moving with the duck. You can see it's like moving to the right when the duck goes to the right and it fades away. And I can attach other things if I'd like, but here's the thing about motion tracking. You can only attach one thing at a time to a video. Meaning that if I want a flower and the heart at the same time, that would not be possible. Because if I go back in my video, I only have one option. So I can either choose the heart or the flower. I cannot choose both of them at the same time. So you want to make sure that you are choosing the right element. You can also add mosaic, which is a blur. You can see now we blurred the duck and now the purple icon is on this and this. It's no longer on the heart. Meaning that if I play this back, it's the mosaic that's following the duck and not the flower and the heart. So you can only have one thing attached at a time. Let's delete these. If you have an image that you want to add or anything else, you would import it from your computer. Let's click away. You can also hit this to hide or unhide the box. Or hit this icon to undo everything. There we go. I'm going to undo this and hit OK. So now I would have to retrack my video and then attach something to it. So this was an easy example. Our subject is in frame at all times and it's moving quite slowly. But what if we had a subject that was moving really quickly? Let's delete this, head over to stock media and I'm going to get my second video. There we go. So I have a video of this car just zooming in and out of the frame. I will be focusing on this white car that comes into the screen and then leaves at this point. So I will trim my video so that I only have the white car. Now this is an example where the subject leaves the frame and we're going to see how that affects the motion tracking tool. So the first thing you want to do is to make sure that the start of your video has the subject in it. So I cannot start the tracker at this point because the subject is nowhere to be found. I need to go through the video to the point where I can see my subject. And you want to make sure that the subject is fully in frame, not something like this, because we are working with a box. There we go. Now my subject is fully in frame. So I need to trim the start as well. Now I can double click, head over to the basic tab and turn on motion tracking. Let's double click on this box, drag it right where my car is and readjust the box.
Remember to leave a little bit of space around your subject. Let's start the tracker. So notice how after it reached this area where our car leaves, the box just gets stranded over here. Now this happens because Filmora couldn't find the subject anymore. And if I were to attach something to this tracker, my text or whatever it is would just be hanging around here. Let's see how that works. I will get a title. For this example, I will grab something from the plain text group in the default option, drag it on top, adjust the length, and now double click on the video to attach the text. There we go. After I have attached it, I can double click on the text and readjust the position. I can also change the text right here, as we learned. And OK once you're finished. And now this text will be attached to my car. Right over here where the car disappears, my text is just hanging out. It's no longer connected to the car because there is no car to be seen. So you want to make sure that your subject is within your frame at all times, or else you're going to get an effect like this. But if you'd like to use this video, you can just lower the duration and make the text disappear before the subject leaves. I will use a dissolve transition. And there we go. Now let's try our third example. Before I use this example, because we have a lot of random scenes, I will use scene detection to only capture the parts where we have a clear subject. Right click on your video, scene detection. These scenes have been detected, and now I can just delete anything that I don't like, play the scene that I want to check. There we go, that's one that I'd like to keep. Let's try a different angle. There we go. And there we are, we have three different scenes. Here we have a subject that just leaves the screen halfway. Over here we have another subject that the camera is following. The third video we have a subject that is being covered by another. So let's add all of these to the timeline. There we go, I will delete the original video. Let's delete the empty tracks. And instead, I will be placing each one on their own independent track. Let's start with the first scene where we have this car. Let's get an element. And I will look for car. I will drag these eyeballs and maybe make the cars look like they're alive. Let's drag this on top like so. I'm at the start of my timeline and I will just turn on motion tracking. Adjust the box. Let's turn off the visibility of the cartoon eyes for now. Double click on the box and readjust it to fit my subject. Start tracking. There we go, that was pretty fast. But now let's attach the eyes to it. Bring this back. Add the cartoon eyes element. Skip through to see if the size is okay. I, I will just rescale this. Place it somewhere here. And now let's play this back. So now my car looks like it's alive. If you want to get rid of this box, just go back to your video and turn on this I button. And now it's gone. So this is my first scene. There we go. 
Let's try another scene. I will delete this video. Turn off the visibility of the eyes. Bring my playhead at the start. Double click. Motion tracking. Place it at the center and just work with the width and the height. Start tracking. There we go. Now attach cartoon eyes again. Turn off the uh, box so we don't see it anymore. Skip through. Bring the visibility back. Skip through to readjust the eyes. Play this back. And there we go. Let's work with the final scene and see what happens when we have a clear subject, but it gets covered by another subject. So I will choose this blue car that's coming from the end. I want to make sure that it's in frame the first uh, at the start of my timeline. Double click on the video. Turn off the eyes for now. Cartoon eyes and now let's play this back or first let's rescale the element. Play this back and you can see the box is no longer on the car. That is because the box needs to be on a subject that is 100% visible throughout your video, or else it will just detach like it did here. And that's how you can use motion tracking to attach different elements to your videos. Again, make sure that your subject is always visible and you're choosing the right size for your box. And now let's move on to the next lesson.